Thank you. Um, okay, I'm Sarah Kaplan. I am not a regular frequenter of this conference, and many of you who do know me are like, what is Sarah Kaplan doing research on gender? Like, when did that happen? Uh, but it happened because I just suddenly decided I had to make my avocation my vocation. And so last year I founded the Institute for Gender and the Economy at the Rotman School, and we're all about trying to, along with you know what's happening here at the Kennedy School and Clayman Institute and other places, trying to uh, you know get the research out there so that we can start um, stop having the same conversation about fixing the women and move on to conversations about fixing the system. And so this um, study is a study that sorry oh even more closer whoa there's gonna be pink lipstick on this so just so you know um, <laughs> even closer so. Um, uh, this is a study that kind of gets at that uh, at those ideas, which is in this case looking at um, innovation acceleration, which are programs in which entrepreneurs get some training, networking, and things like that. They go to, through together as a cohort, and we're going to look at that as a way to think about are there structural interventions that can be made that are not about telling women to be more confident, uh, but or dress differently or change their hair. I feel bad not having dyed my gray hair, but apparently I was supposed to have done that. Um, but instead, thinking about what are the, the structural or systems or practice changes. Um, that we can uh, think about. So, uh, what what we decide? What I have advantage of having Peter Roberts as my co-author. He's provided all this incredible data that we've layered on, which is that we have data of applicants to 49 different uh, innovation accelerators, and we know who was selected and who wasn't. And then we also have data from a longitudinal uh, analysis uh, a year later where we resurveyed them to understand both for those who were rejected and those who were accepted what their performance was. So we're able to look at three different stages of intervention of the innovation accelerators, application, who is attracted and who applies, selection of the participants and acceleration, and we can kind of see are there gendered effects at any stages and does that differ by uh, accelerator. Um, the good news in this analysis is that Excel, you know, there's still a question out there in the research about acceleration, does it actually work? It seems to work in this case. Uh, overall, uh, the brown bar is, um, uh, the ones that did not get selected in and the green bar are the ones that did get selected in, so acceleration matters. On the other hand, when we start to look at the different practices as we go through, and we've been able to interview or survey a number of the accelerators about their practices, and this gets at the structures, we find something actually quite interesting. First of all, there are a number of accelerators who you know, on their websites or in surveys or things like that express strong preference for female applicants with this idea that we need more female entrepreneurs. And it turns out when they express that strong preference, they actually get more women to apply. By the way, if they have a very high focus on finance and things like that, they actually get fewer uh, women to apply. They also, when they express a strong preference for women, select more women into their program. So they're sort of living up to that promise. We say we want more women, we admit more women. By the way, if they're more focused on finance, even net of the number of women that they attract, which is fewer, they select even fewer women into the program. So when they have a very high focus on competitiveness and finance, they get fewer, they attract fewer, they select fewer, and if they say they have a preference for women, they actually do better. The bad news is when we go to actually looking at acceleration, um, because uh, there we see, first of all, and disappointingly, a negative correlation between whether they expressed a preference for women and whether they actually had pro-female practices in their accelerators. Things like having a lot of female mentors, delivering programs uh, with a lot of uh, uh, women, having more collaborative work practices and things like that. That was sort of missing. It was sort of like those accelerators that expressed a preference for women um, thought that they were done <laughs> and didn't do much else. And so actually the, those women who got in and they got in, they applied disproportionately more highly, they got selected more highly, actually did worse in those accelerators than in the other accelerators that actually weren't so focused on talking about the, uh, their gender preferences or preferences for women, but spent more, much more time actually uh, changing the practices in terms of collaborative uh, approaches to selecting uh, who gets financed, in terms of having female mentors and things like that. And those were the accelerators that actually did better for women. So we're seeing what I'm calling right now the paradox of preferences versus practice. This is not unlike some of the work that you know other people in this room, Sonia included, on you know if you say you have diversity and then you don't actually deliver on that, you get that that perverse effect. And we're seeing again that very 
very perverse effect in the case of innovation acceleration, although this work is uh, still quite early stage. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just in the opening stages of this, so I would love to get uh, feedback on that. There's my gong. Um, and follow Gender Economy on Twitter. I'm tweeting about all of you today, so.